Good morning, and I wanted to just document this. Aside from making bows, I also do birch bark work, and I just finished this, <laughs> luckily, because the fellow I'm doing it for called me like 15 minutes ago and said he's on his way to pick it up, and I was just still pressing the photograph, which I'm going to zoom in here. Really nice winter scene, and using the spray mount, Oh, I am not into photography, so the spray mount worked out. I had to press it. it had a heating pad underneath the plywood that's glued on. Put another piece of plywood over it. Um, padded with a towel, and then wound up just kind of baking it on there, but it worked. Then I just added the cedar roots um, to the frame. Sometimes I do fancier twig work, but because it was kind of a sparse winter scene, I thought that I'd just go with cedar roots. And then this is kind of... <laughs> Welcome to my messy living room over here. A couple bows, three that are finished. The one on the right side will go with, pardon the movement. You can see the arrows peeking through there. They were received without the points being pitched, and so I separated them and wound up doing the, the old spruce pitch, ground charcoal, a little bit of fat routine on there to complete them so they're actually finished arrows update there's poor guy is waiting for a 45 pound paddle bow thunderbird design at 25 inches and one of those is that one if you're still out there and still want one the bow's ready that bear paw one is striking and back now if you're questioning my sanity after that last video about you know basically tearing down <laughs> boundaries as far as categorizing bows i think of it kind of like well, a cedar swamp. Think about a cedar swamp. The predominant tree species is cedar, and that's a bunch of cedar roots glued on there. But we don't want to forget that that cedar swamp, along with the cedar trees, they have birch trees, yellow and white birch, hop hornbeam, um, striped maple, mountain maple, still some white ash, a whole bunch of other trees. And I think of it as... It, you look back at a certain region, their bow types, the one bow type would be represented by that cedar tree in a cedar swamp. But when you really try to get into it, you have to acknowledge the other ones, the other trees. Even if there's only one kind or one of one kind of tree out there, it's still a part of that. And along with that cedar tree representing that bow, that specific bow type in that assemblage of bows, you not only have the trees, you have the small plants, you have the animals, it's a community. And so that's what I'm going for. That's my explanation for, you know, trying to rock the boat and say, like, there's more kinds of plains bows than just one, or there's one more kinds of Cherokee longbows than one. So I'm trying to, and I don't know if I can be successful at it, try to represent and think about the community of bows and how they relate to people. And with that, I'll shut up. There's the beauty shot. That's Michigan in winter. Beautiful. Have a great day, everyone.